Now let's give a shout out to our TV audience. Say, praise the Lord, you ought to be here. Ought to be in church. Giving out that total praise unto God. And my text is coming from 1 John, the 4th chapter, beginning the 13th verse, written by the Apostle John. And he writes, We know that we live in him and he in us because he has given us of his spirit. And we have seen and testified that the Father has sent his Son to be the Savior of the world. If anyone acknowledges that Jesus is the Son of God, God lives in him and he in God. And so we know and rely on the love God has for us. God is love. Whoever lives in love lives in God and God in him. In this way, love is made complete among us so that we will have confidence on the day of judgment because in this world we are like him. There is no fear in love, but perfect love drives out fear because fear has to do with punishment. The one who fears is not made perfect in love. We love, and that's the King James verse here, we love him because he first loved us. If anyone says, I love God, yet hates his brother, not me, but the Bible says, he or she is a, a liar. For anyone who does not love his brother whom he has seen cannot love God whom he has not seen. And he has given us this command, whoever loves God must also love his brother. And my subject is perfect love. Can it be that after all the songs, the movies, the poems and plays about love, that we truly can't understand what love is without it being connected to the God who is love? Songs such as Endless Love by Diana Ross and Lionel Richie. I'll make love to you, said boys to me. And we found love. I don't know why she sang the song Rihanna, because I don't know if she done found it yet, but Rihanna and Calvin Harris. I'll always love you, said Whitney Houston. Greatest play, Love Tragedy, Romeo and Juliet, movie classics, when Harriet met Sally. I like that movie. <laughs> Casablanca, Titanic, King Kong. <laughs> King Kong was a love story, just like Beauty and the Beast. It's a love story. I mean, we can't go figure out how he's going to make that work, but it was a love story. <laughs> Poems such as Still I Rise by Maya Angelou and Sonnet 16 by Shakespeare. All of these uh, songs and movies and, and plays all about love. But in the final analysis, the Greek language teaches us that there are basically three kinds of love. The first love, of phileo love, which is the love of family and friends. Eros love, the love of passion, where we get the, our English erotica. Agape love, which is the love of the willing, not the feeling. These are the basic loves that we find in Scripture. And out of these three, agape love is the greatest love, the perfect love, because it is unconditional in nature. By perfect love, I mean it is complete, fully developed, real, true, mature, and is with all the heart. Note what Matthew chapter 22 tells us in verses 35 to 40. When Jesus was asked by an expert in the law, what's the greatest love? What's the greatest commandment in the law? Jesus replied, love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your mind. This is the first and the greatest commandment. And the second commandment is like unto it. Love your neighbor as yourself. All the law and the prophets hang on these two 
commandments. You see, we cannot eros, have passion love, and phileo love, the love of family and friends that also carries with it love out of obligation as being our family until we get agape love right. You see, the source of all love is God. 1 John 1 and 14, 19 again says, we love him because he first loved us. We even love because he first loved us. You see, there must always be an initiator in any type of love relationship. Even if we're talking Eros love, somebody got to get this thing started. You know, times have really, really changed. In my day and age, in the 60s and 70s, it was always the man that got it started. Women knew how to connive us into thinking it was, it was, it was us. But we have to learn again that this eros love, this boy chase girl love, it is a love that requires an initiator. Twice in the fourth chapter, the apostle John declares that God is love in the eighth verse and in the 16th verse. Let us be clear in this declaration. It's not that God's essence is love, then it would be love is God. No, instead, God defines love. It does not define him. God is love is a statement about the loving nature of God revealed in his son, being sent into the world to save mankind. From God's perspective, perfect love is about doing, not just talking. We know how to talk love, but to show love is another matter altogether. In John 3, 16, the word of God says, For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only Son that whoever believes in him will not perish, but have life everlasting. That is love in action. God seeing your need. And those on television, knowing that you are separating, that the things in this world can't ultimately satisfy you, understanding that as human beings, we were dead in trespasses and sin. God did that which hurt him the most, to send his son into the world. But it was the only way to save you and you and you, those of you watching, and me. And I thank God for sending his son. In 1 John 4, 9 and 10, we see that statement again. He said, this is how God showed his love among us. He sent his one and only son into the world that we, what, might live through him. The birth of Jesus Christ, which we will be celebrating in a few weeks, that, ladies and gentlemen, is the great proof of God's love. God sent his son to be the atoning sacrifice for your sins and mine. In love relationships, actions always speak louder than words. This agape love was manifested to the undeserved. With eros and phileo love, there's some sense of it being deserved based on feeling eros. And that's why I don't move away from that. I think if you're going to end up with someone, you ought to feel something. <laughs> Brothers and sisters, this agape love is a love that is unconditional. Sometimes with phileo love and the love of family and friends, we do things out of obligation. This is our family. These are our friends. But this agape love is a mind-boggling type of love. Why? Because it sees no worthiness in the object that is love. When Jesus walked the dusty streets of Galilee, 
this agape love, it drew people everywhere he went. This love melted the hearts of the worst sinners and even the most moral. You see, the thing about ice, now when this ice was first put in this glass, there was no water in the glass. But now there is water accumulating, and we all know why the water is accumulating, because the ice is melting. But the thing I want you to understand about it is the heat from the light is bearing down on it. And the heat from all y'all praising God up in here is bearing down on this ice. Well, the ice is a solid. So for it to melt, something greater than it must come up on it for it to melt. Because if you put it back in a freezer, it will be a solid again. Even the ice that's melted will become solid again because what's freezing it is greater than what was warming it. And what I'm trying to get at, I don't care how hard a person's heart can be. I don't care how wrong a person has lived their life. The love of God will melt any heart. When that love acts upon a person, there is nothing like it. And many times, ladies and gentlemen, we don't even get it. We don't get it because we don't understand. Well, we see the ice melting. We may know how. But when God is moving upon a person's heart, many times it's invisible. You can't even see that God is moving upon them. But little by little, God is changing them. Little by little, God is warming them. Little by little, the light of Christ is shining down on them. And the heat from the light of Christ will one day save their souls. And this is the reason we must never stop witnessing. This is the reason we must always tell everybody we know about a Jesus who can save a soul. Those in prison listening and watching this broadcast, even you can be saved. I have prayed with hit men for the Holy Ghost, and I watched the love of God melt the heart of a hit man. Don't tell me what God can't do. I've watched the love of God get on somebody who was a player. And they don't want to play no more but the songs of Calvary. What manner of love is this that we should be called the children of God? You see, brothers and sisters, everywhere Jesus went, this love melted people. Jesus met a woman at, at a well. This is we're talking about water. This woman, like some of you under the sound of my voice, had been used and abused by men in, the, in her life. Some women have been in relationships with men that went bad so often, so long, that they began to feel something was wrong with them. They didn't understand this sense of abuse. We just finished Domestic Violence Month, trying to help those who, many of whom are, are in uh, intimate partner violence, who suffer in hurt and pain every single day, of their life. So this woman is going to get some water and she's going to get water in, in the middle of the day, not early in the day because everybody was talking about her. Everybody was, was putting her down you know, because she was she, you know, this chick, excuse my language uh, this chick had had uh, five husbands and the one she was with now wasn't her man, wasn't her husband either so if you think shacking up is new, you're wrong. <laughs> and so she got tired of being the talk of the town. Now let's just be clear. Any woman get five men is fine. Y'all ain't got eight men. <laughs> any sister can pull off five of them. But let me tell you something. Any woman that's good looking to tell you this, it don't matter how many men I have if I can't get one relationship to last. People just want one healthy relationship. So what kind of hurt and pain was this woman going through? Relationship after relationship. And all she can do is think in the natural. I need some water. I'm going to get it. Jesus sitting on the well said, hey, got some water for you. 
Oh, you gonna help me draw it out? No, no, no. See, this water that I have, you drink one time and you'll never drink again. She said, well, wait a minute. Well, get me this water. And Jesus said, I am the water. <laughs> He that drinks from me will never thirst again. This woman got so excited, she ran away without her water that she came to get. Because that's what the love of God can do. The love of God can get such a hold of you that you can forget what you came to even do in the first place. Let me hear somebody say, the love of God is melting. The love of God is melting hearts. You see, brothers and sisters, in our sex craze selfish society. We have put the love of the feeling before the love of the willing. You see, lust can't wait to get. But love can't wait to give. I remember years ago, brother got into a really bad relationship with a woman. Just horrible. <laughs> and so as it progressed and I was in the counseling, I, and the woman was gorgeous. I got her own that. I said, brother, how did you get yourself in this? He said, past it was lust. It was lust. I had to have her. Next thing you know, it's horrible. You can't make no relationship be sustained on lust. Matter of fact, if we will just be honest about it, some of you under the sound of my voice have lusted after men and women who years later you saw and you couldn't even figure out where you were at. You see them late, you be like, what? Uh, I, I wanted you? <laughs> Because, see, that's what love, lust can ultimately, if, it's, if lust is nothing have its first anchor in love, then it's all about selfishness. It's all about, hear me, it's all about what we want at the moment. But what we want at the moment is not many times what we want or need in the long run of our life. And I watch people fall because of lust. I watch them give in to their sexual drives outside of marriage. And then I watch six months go by, a year go by, and the same lust that drove it has now turned to hate. And now that other person better not touch them anymore. You cannot drive a relationship on lust. You need to know, my brothers and sisters, that somebody loves you, that somebody cares about you. And one of the ways that you know someone loves you, because love gets. Love wants to give. Lust gets, love gives. And I say to you dating to so many young people, understand my voice, if you dating somebody now won't give you nothing, they don't love you. And it ain't going to get no better. I'm sorry. That's just an FYI for you. So brothers and sisters, our marriages and our love relationships are torn apart. I stand here with before people not thinking it all the way through, not understanding what's really going on on the inside. And I quote these words that you will become one in heart, one in mind, and one in affection. Everyone's smiling. Everyone's happy. And then the next thing you know, the marriage is over, and we're left with the question of what becomes of the brokenhearted, who have love and now departed, either Jimmy or David Ruffin, one of them. <laughs> because we have been so damaged by our Eros and Phileo relationships, we are afraid to take the risk to love again. Let me tell you something. Anything worth having in life comes with risk. There are no risk-proof relationships. No one can hurt me worse than that one woman sitting over there. There's thousands of you who are members of this church, but no one can hurt me worse than that one woman sitting right there. Nobody. And trust me, we done had some hurts and pains we done went through. Because you can't be married to nobody in no 40 years and they ain't hurt you. Oh, I ain't got no help out here today. I thought I was at a sanctified church, mother. 
Romans 8 and 15 tells us these words. The Apostle Paul says, For you did not receive a spirit that makes you a slave again to fear. You received the spirit of sonship. And by him we cry, Abba, tender, loving, caring, Father. You cannot be in any relationship and not run the risk of hurt. And as I pull off of that, I want you to be also crystal clear on this as well. If you close up in life, and some of you have been so hurt, so damaged, you just close up. But let me tell you something. When you protect yourself like that, you're right. You can't be hurt, but can't nothing get in either. You got to open up. You got to open up to experience all that God has for you in this world, even if it comes, even if it comes with the risk of hurt and pain. Hallelujah. When you know, I want you to know what he says in verses 17 and 18 of chapter 4 of 1 John. He said, in this way, love is made complete among us. Why? That we will have confidence on the day of judgment. Because in this world, we are like him. Some of you have been saved and walking with God all these years. And you still believe you're going to hell. Why? Why don't you trust God? He said, I have come that you might have eternal life. And that you might have it forever. He says, he that has the son has life. And will not come into the judgment. And because we don't trust God and we make God be like our human relationships where we have trusted people and they have hurt us and damaged us, we feel that at the vinyl analysis, we're going to end up in hell. But I guarantee you, when you understand the real love of God, then you begin to understand I am not going to hell because Jesus died on Calvary for my sins that I might go to heaven. Luke 12 and 32, Jesus says these words. Fear not, little flock, for it is the Father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. As I close, this love that Christ has for you must now be made manifest to others. This is not a cute, fuzzy puppy love. Our young people, that's why parents, you have to watch the teenagers because they confuse infatuation with love. They just so hurt. But young, young man took care of that long ago. His, his girlfriend uh, asked him, you know, do you, how much do, how, how did you love me? Uh, will, you, will, you, will you die for me? And he told him, my love is an undying love. This love that Christ has is a love that's there in your time of need. Verses 20 and 21. I want you to really stay with these verses. If anyone says, I love God, hates his brother, he's a liar. Anyone who does not love his brother whom he's seen can't possibly love God whom he has not seen. And he has given us this command. Whoever loves God must what? Those whose lives are not characterized by love for others are not Christians, no matter what they claim. The first fruit of the Spirit in Galatians 5 and 22 is love. The first sign that people know you have been born again and have the Holy Spirit is love, followed by joy and peace and, and patience and kindness and goodness and faithfulness and self-control. When people see the love of God on you, it, it, it's amazing. That's how your family members get saved. When they see how God has changed you and how now you love God and how you reach out in loving concern for your brothers and your sisters, that's the sign that you have been born again. Eh, let me work on this. I'm almost done. You see, agape love is first because sometimes the order in which we do things are, is important. Oh, I love my car keys. Somebody give me some car keys. 
I didn't mean to leave my keys. Oh, thank you. Is this one of these ones, though, that you, uh, you got one of the monitors that you push the button on? Yeah, that's oh, that's, car. oh, it's your wife's car. Right. Okay. <laughs> you can get in your car, and you can press down on the brakes. Nothing happens. You can press down on the accelerator. Nothing happens. Why? It ain't on. See, this is our problem. We're always trying to make something a love. We're trying to accelerate our Eros love. We're trying to put the brakes on this. We're trying to, it ain't on. You see, when you turn the car on, then things work. Now, know something else. Even when you turn it on, you got to hit the brakes first. As you put, you just can't hit it and then hit something. Nope, you got it. Safety features. What's my point? The order in which we do some things is important. So when you are trying to have your phileo love, and you're trying to have your Aros love, and you ain't been turned on by God. When you are not turned on first by the love of God, don't nothing else work right in your life. But when you get the love of God right, and you turn him on, and that motor of God's love is running, next thing you know, your love relationships of Eros and Phileo, these relationships begin to work because you got love in the right order. You put God first, and then the other loves come together. Thank you for joining us today, and we look forward to worshiping with you at either our 9 a.m. or 11.30 a.m. Sunday services that are biblically based, illustrative, contemporary, and timely. Our services cater to men, women, the young, and young at heart. We also invite you to join us for Tuesday night Bible study at 7.45 p.m. and Lunch on the Word on Wednesdays at noon. We are so thankful for your continued support of this ministry. And if this excerpt from our service touched your heart to either give financially to the ministry or to purchase the entire worship service on either CD or DVD, please call 708-283-0383 or visit us online at www.victoryapostolicchurch.org. 